Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Today I have some more DIY last minute Christmas gift ideas. So the other day I was like, what am I gonna film for this Sunday? I ended up going on my community tab here on YouTube and posting a couple of different options and the results are as is shown, what? as shown here. Um, but basically everyone was like, can you please do another DIY Christmas gift idea video? And of course I wanted to come through with some more DIY gift ideas for you guys. I personally think that this year especially is an amazing year to DIY some more heartfelt gifts, um, just to kind of brighten up the spirits for the end of 2020 and set the tone right for 2021. So today I have four super cute DIY gift ideas. And if you guys did not already know, I actually did one of these this year as well. I'll put a card up here in case you want a couple more ideas. I have a whole nother video sharing DIY gift ideas as as well and I honestly do think that the gifts in this video I might like even more than the last one I don't know they're all just they're all really cute like you can just find something for everyone truly I try to have a nice range of items as well for really anybody in your life and also I did want to mention that if you need any last minute quick gift ideas that are just like you know you can purchase on a whim head over to my shop lonefox.com we are shipping every single day to make sure that you guys get your Christmas orders on time before Christmas time and I'm actually gonna give you guys a 15% off code so use code candy on the screen. It'll get you 15% off at checkout and just make sure to place your order right away. That way we can ship it out so you hopefully will get it in time for Christmas. I can't 100% say that you will. However, we're going to try to get it to you as quick as possible. So I just wanted to give you guys that little code as well. But of course, we are going to jump on into some DIY gift ideas and let's go ahead and get started. So the first project I'm going to share with you guys is something that you can easily gift alongside a candle because I do think a candle is just one of those gifts that are very like a no-brainer gift idea. Like you can get anybody a candle and everyone kind of likes a candle you know so I decided why not go ahead and make like a really cute little match holder slash match striker to go along with it and I made it out of some clay and it just looks like a very kind of modernized match holder and it's really cute to pair alongside a candle just to kind of add that little handmade element so let me share with you guys how I made this Alrighty guys, so jumping into our first project, all you're gonna need is a little bit of clay here. I buy my clay in bulk, by the way, because I use it so often on the channel, but you're just gonna need a nice large amount of clay. I'm warming that up in my hands and I'm gonna place down some parchment paper just to go ahead and protect my surface. And as you can see here, I kind of have a log of clay and I'm actually going to be using this log to kind of roll out into about a half inch wide long log of clay, basically. So as you can see here, I'm rolling it out and when it's thicker, I tend to use my palms more. That's a little tip I would give you guys is to use your palms when it's a thicker amount of clay but then as it gets thinner I suggest using your fingertips it's a bit more delicate and it makes the clay kind of stretch a bit more without warping at all so that's exactly what I'm doing here and in the end you're actually going to want this to be about a little over 30 inches in length because we're going to need five six inch sections of this clay so I'm rolling it out into my half inch log Once you have your desired thickness, I grabbed an X-Acto knife and a ruler. So I'm gonna do a little cut on the end here and then I'm going to measure out six inches in length and I'm going to do a cut as well on that end. And these are basically going to be rolled up into little coils here or I guess into little rings. And we're gonna be making five of these that will then stack on top of each other. So you're gonna wanna cut a total of five six inch sections which we're gonna be forming into rings. to create said ring it is very simple you're just going to take your little six inch log there wrap it into a loop shape and then just kind of press the clay together there is no rhyme or reason for this at all and I am not a clay expert so there might be an easier way or a quicker way to do this but I literally wrapped it up as you guys can see here and just used my fingers just to kind of mesh the clay together and just like mold it into a circular shape Once those are all created, we can go ahead and start stacking these rings up to kind of create the section that the matches are going to stick out of. So I just stacked up all five of my rings, just carefully placing them on top of each other and tapping them down into each other with enough pressure so that they stick together, but not enough pressure to where you're going to be smashing the actual ring shape because you want that nice kind of rounded ring edge to kind of pull off this vibe and aesthetic that we're going for for this particular match holder. 
I rolled out another piece of clay, which will be the bottom of our little match holder. And I'm going to be placing our section that we created with the rings on top, cutting away any excess with my X-Acto knife, removing that excess clay. And then you're just going to want to go all the way around it once again, using your finger and the warmth of your finger just to mend that bottom section to the bottom ring and just make it look nice and clean and even. And once you're done with this, which it takes a couple of minutes and feel free to kind of roll it on your desktop, use an acrylic roller like I am to kind of just mend it together. But overall, you're just going to want that to have a more smooth finish on the bottom, bake it for 30 minutes, and this is what you're going to have. Now here comes the fun part. I love painting little clay projects like this, so I grabbed some tan paint, which I'm going to mix with some white paint to create a very similar color to the clay. I actually got it very, very spot on. I wanted a very clay look, but I knew I wanted to add a top coat just to kind of finish it off. So this paint color worked out perfectly, and I went around, and as you can see, this paint just really finishes it off. It makes the definition like a little bit better as well on the sides there, and fills in any cracks or crevices or fingerprints really nicely. And then I knew I needed to just add a little bit more detail. So I put some water in a cup with a little bit of black paint and we're going to almost be creating like a watercolor here. So I'm mixing up the black paint into the water and I'm going to be splattering it with my finger as shown. I'm just kind of tapping the top of the paintbrush and I'm going to be splattering some dots onto the outside of our ring holder. I really feel like this gives it a more ceramic vibe as opposed to a clay vibe. And I just love this kind of quirky addition. I think the dots add a nice little touch and you can also totally customize the paint color or the splatter color, whatever you want to do for a more personalized look but of course we do need a striker on this piece here so I got this piece of sandpaper it's a very high grit it's about 220 I suggest using a higher grit as opposed to a lower grit and I'm just cutting out a small little circle this is literally a piece of sandpaper I've already used quite a bit so cutting off the corner there using a bit of quick hold adhesive to glue that right on the bottom and do keep in mind there is some sandpaper on the bottom so maybe place it on top of some books as opposed to a scratchable surface if that's a concern for you Next up, I have a really cute throw blanket DIY for you guys. And something I feel like when you go to purchase a throw blanket, they always have the very cute throw blankets, but the cute ones I feel like are always not the comfiest. And then the comfy ones are always not the cutest, you know? So I kind of wanted to mix those two elements together of a comfy and cute and create just the perfect throw blanket. And that is exactly what I think I created for you guys today. You are going to love this. And I think anyone would love receiving this gift. So let me share with you guys how I made this one. I just love this blanket DIY. How adorable is this plaid fabric on top? I also got this really pretty faux Sherpa that is so super soft and I got both of these in one and a half yards. I'm also using a little bit of this thick yarn or well, I thought I was going to be using the thick yarn and you guys are going to see what happens in a second here. So I ended up stringing on this wool roving yarn that I got at Joanne and I wanted to go ahead and stitch the edge of this with a nice blanket stitch all the way around and just connect the two pieces of fabric. But as you can see here, I could not pull this yarn through. It would not go through at all, which I was so sad about. I even used pliers to try to pull it through and I got a couple of stitches down the line and I was like, you know what? I cannot recommend this to you guys at all. It was not easy. So I ended up switching over to a lighter or not lighter, but like a thinner yarn and it worked so much better. You guys, this thinner yarn was also in an orange color, similar to the plaid, which I loved. So all I'm doing is I'm going to be connecting our two pieces of fabric. Really all you need is a nice little top layer, which will be the top of your blanket. In my case, it's the plaid. And then your under layer for the cozy element, which is this nice little faux kind of shearling Sherpa material. And I'm just going around and doing a simple blanket stitch, which is basically where you go through the back, up through the front. And I just hold my finger, as you can see on the left side here, to catch the loop. And then I'm going to put my needle right through the loop, pull it not tightly, pretty loosely actually, just to kind of have that yarn nestle on the edge there. And that finishes off your blanket stitch. And for this project, you guys, I repeated this process around the entire exterior of the blanket, just attaching my two pieces of fabric. And it creates a nice kind of detail along the edge. But also in the end, you have a really pretty top layer with the plaid. And then you have a really soft, cozy under layer with that kind of shearling material.
project number three is one that's a little bit different. And we are actually going to be making some DIY potpourri. And this is really fun. And you can create large batches of this. That way you can kind of gift it out to a lot of people at once. I'm going to be drying down some oranges, some rosemary. We're going to mix it up with some cloves and some cinnamon sticks just to create a really nice kind of homemade fresh potpourri and then package it in a cute little jar. But let me share with you guys how I did this. Creating your very own potpourri is actually extremely simple, but it is a little bit time consuming and I'll tell you guys why. So I'm starting off by grabbing a couple of these navel oranges I got at the grocery store. I'm going to be cutting them into a quarter inch wide rings. You could totally do whatever width you want, but the thinner the ring, the quicker it's going to dehydrate in our oven. So I cut all of these oranges down into these ring shapes and then I place them on a piece of parchment paper and a baking sheet. And I'm going to be popping this into the lowest degree on your oven because this is going to be baking in here for about five to six hours and this is what it looked like after about two and a half hours and then we reached this point at about five hours we have these nice oranges I'm also using some cinnamon sticks some cloves a little bit of pine and then also some dried out rosemary that I also put in the oven and these are the bottles that I'm going to be using to package my potpourri they are so cute just from Target they look like little vintage milk bottles I'm popping in some pine and then we're going to add in a couple of our orange slices now the orange slices are more so for looks they don't give off the like any form of aroma really but the cinnamon sticks, the clove, the pine, and the rosemary is where it is at. So I'm adding, of course, all of those sections as well. And just kind of filling it in with oranges because the oranges really do add a very pretty look to the overall potpourri. And I'm just popping those in. So this is what the inside of our little container is going to look like. And you could have totally adjust this to whatever, like, amount you want to give somebody. And these are some really cute labels that I created. I'm going to link them below for you guys. I made this on Photoshop and I want you guys to have it as well. So they're little potpourri labels. They basically say Merry Christmas with a little instruction underneath on how to make your potpourri smell the best that it possibly can. So I cut mine into these little banner shapes by kind of cutting a little triangle out of the end and turning it into a little banner. And then of course I also have to poke a hole or I guess punch a hole onto one side. I'm using my nice large hole punch, but you can use a needle or whatever you have to do so. Grabbing a little bit of a cotton twine, I'm going to wrap around a couple times under the top rim. You could also use hemp or whatever you have on hand. And then I'm going to string on my little label that I created and just tie in a single... I guess not here, but before I tie the bow, I'm actually going to just add a little sprig of greenery just because I think it adds a nice little touch to the outside of this. And that finishes off your little potpourri jar. How cute are these? I think they would be so much fun in a stocking or alongside of another gift. And I could totally picture this at Anthropology for like $22 and we made it for a couple. And saving my favorite project for last, we're going to be creating some clay earrings. Now, I have seen so many people on TikTok creating these clay earrings. They're all over Etsy. They're all over the internet. However, they're pretty simple to create. And I wanted to share with you guys how to create these earrings because I truly do think like a simple pair of earrings like this, which you can also totally mass produce these as well if you had a lot of people to gift to, like a solid substantial pair of earrings is a nice present in my opinion. So I'm going to share with you guys how to make these kind of like geometric clay, funky, retro style earrings. So let's go ahead and jump on into this project. And I'm sure you guys know that I had to save my favorite project for last, and it is another clay project. So I'm starting off with some white clay. I'm going to be rolling it out with my acrylic roller, which by the way, guys, I picked this up specifically for this video, and it is a lifesaver for clay. I got this at Joanne's Fabric as well. I also picked up these really cute little cookie cutters, which are little small oval shapes, and then some other small shapes as well. And this embossing folder from Joanne's Fabrics too. And basically an embossing folder has a kind of embossed and debossed section. It's normally meant for card baking or paper, but I figured why don't I imprint this pattern into the actual clay itself and create a textured clay earring. So that's exactly what I did. I just rolled out a nice thin sheet of clay, placed my embossing folder over, rolled over the top of it, and used my cookie cutters to cut out some simple shapes. And you can get quite a few earrings out of just like one little rolled out piece of clay section. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut out some shapes that I want.
I also like to pick up all the little pieces that I do cut out and kind of round off the edges with my finger a little bit and just tap them along the edge just to make sure all of the clay is nice and smooth, but don't press too hard because you don't want your fingerprints, of course, to be imprinted on there. I also went in with a needle to poke a little hole at the top, which I did figure out later. I could totally have just used my hole punch as well. You're going to see me kind of bringing that in in a little bit. But if you don't have a hole punch, you could totally use a needle or a small straw. And then I had a really fun idea to kind of mix in a couple of colored clays. So I have this light pink one. I'm kind of taking off a couple pieces and sprinkling it over the top of a rolled out sheet of white clay. I'm just going to go across, add a little bit of pink, also a little bit of dark brown, and then also a little bit of this kind of like caramelly brown color. And once you add all of your pieces, you can roll over the top of it with an acrylic roller and it turns it into like a terrazzo sheet, which I thought looked so cute. And I was like, this is going to be perfect for some earrings. So I went ahead, I cut out some earring shapes with the oval here. And I just love the way that these ones turned out. You can totally customize the colors as well. And for the cutouts of this clay, I actually used two of the oval hole punches. In the top left, you could see how I created like two little discs with a larger punch and then a smaller punch on the inside. And then I used my industrial hole punch to actually create the holes, which will allow us to turn them into earrings. Now for this part, I rolled out three little pieces of clay and attached them on top of each other. And sadly, my camera turned off while I was filming, which I had no idea. But I'm just turning these into little rainbow shapes, which I thought would be really cute also for an earring. I have no idea who I'm going to gift these two this holiday season, but I definitely think I could find some friends to gift these two. So I ended up making these little rainbow shapes for the clay and I'm making a little eye pin as well with some extra wire, which is essentially just a loop. And then you have some wire kind of off as an excess, which you're then going to push on into the inside of the clay, just so that it more so turns into a charm because this piece in particular, I couldn't really punch a hole in the top of the rainbow. I more so had to add a loop to the top of it. So creating an eye shape, a little circle with a round nose plier and then putting it into your rainbow is perfect. And for our last style, I just went ahead and grabbed my last piece of white clay, mixed in some random bits of colored clay, and I'm just turning this into a little marbled slab by kind of pulling the clay and stretching it and then also twisting it, but not overworking it to where the color changes. It's more so that the color is just marbled inside of it. And I'm gonna go ahead, use my little punches here to punch out a couple of shapes within this marbled clay. You're gonna wanna go ahead and place all of these on top of some parchment paper and then on top of a baking sheet and just place this into the oven for the minimum amount of time, which is typically around 15 minutes. And once they are out, they're gonna be nice and hardened and ready to be turned into earrings. And all we have to do to connect our pieces is actually just use a jump ring, which is essentially a wire ring, which can easily be opened, especially when it's large like this with your fingers. But if you cannot open it, you can also use two pairs of pliers to simply open up the rings, slip on your little clay charms and just kind of put them together as well. And I also knew that I wanted to paint our embossed one because the embossing actually really shows up so much more when it's painted as opposed to that kind of like white clay feature. So I painted it pink. I also connected together our marble earrings and our little rainbow earrings. They're all kind of constructed the same exact way. So I didn't find a need to share with you how I constructed every single earring, but all you really need to attach the clay is some jump rings. And then to finish off the earrings, we also had to add the actual post. And these are some glue on posts. I got these at Joann's as well. Just glue them on with some jewelry adhesive, let them cure, and you're good to go. And that, guys, finishes off today's last-minute DIY Christmas gift video. I hope that you enjoyed today's projects. And, of course, these do not have to be Christmas presents. These can also be things you make for yourself or as maybe birthday gifts in the upcoming year, whatever it might be. I think they're just cute projects all in all. So thank you guys so much for watching. And, of course, do not forget to take advantage of that 15% off coupon code, Candy Cane, over on the website and get your order in ASAP so we can hopefully ship it to you by Christmas time. And, of course, we still have our giveaway for today. So before Jumping into that, I do have to mention that we hit 900,000 on the channel today. 900k you guys we just hit that absolutely crazy thank you guys so much who have subscribed to my channel if you're not already make sure to subscribe to my channel to become part of the lone fox family just thank you guys so much for everyone who comments or even thumbs up just the smallest things like a quick little thumbs up honestly makes my day like it is just incredible to see your guys' support on my content thank you thank you so so much but of course because of you guys i'm doing an incredible giveaway today i'm actually going to be giving away three 500 gift cards to wherever you 
want. So you can choose anywhere and I will get you a gift card from there. I didn't want to set it to a specific thing because I know not everyone has the same places to shop or likes the same places. So I figured why not give away three gift cards to three lucky winners. All you have to do to enter today's giveaway is leave a comment in the comment section below and you also must be subscribed to my channel. So if you are not already, make sure to click that subscribe button. Also make sure to hit that bell icon. That way you stay notified on my videos and leave a comment below making sure to also include your Instagram handle or your email or your Twitter, whatever you have that I'm able to contact you through since I'm not able to actually message you here on YouTube um, and you'll be entered into the giveaway. It is 100% open worldwide and the winner will be chosen a week from today. So yeah, super, super simple and easy. Thank you guys again so much for supporting and following and just commenting and everything. I can't believe we're at 900,000. That is absolutely just insane. It's almost Christmas time too, which is so exciting. So this is a great gift for me, honestly. I will catch you all in my next video. Have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.